Moving right along to the next build, I'm going to be doing the infamous Tamiya F40. I have been collecting parts for this for about 6 months now, so there will be parts in this box that are not included with the kit. I'll quickly go through the box, then we'll look at each sprue in greater detail. Starting off with the body, we'll see that this is really showing its age. This kit was molded in 1988. There are heavy mold lines and flash. I am not used to that in a Tamiya kit, but we'll make do. And I will acknowledge right now that my fingernails are gross and dirty. I was working on my car all day, then I shot this video later tonight. This didn't show up in a viewfinder, but I thought it'd show up better here. It's just showing the mold mark of 1988. I do not like how the vents are molded in on the rear bonnet. I'm gonna have to cut those out later. I've heard horror stories about the bane of this kit being that this rear bonnet does not fit. And I could see why. This will mainly be displayed with the bonnet open, showing off the engine, so I'm not really too concerned about the fitment of that. In typical Tamiya fashion, we got a full engine, we got our separate block halves, full exhaust, Get various brackets as this chassis is heavily reinforced. And the instructions incorrectly call out that that intake be black on the edges. That is incorrect. As always, I would prefer these parts be molded in white. I never understood why they mold parts in body color that are not going to be body color. Yeah, we do have two separate mirrors here. I thought at first it'd be the Euro spec and US spec car. But going through the parts, all we have are the Euro spec, so I don't know why there's two separate mirrors. Next up, we got the interior tub and more of the chassis. Now, depending on the years, I've seen the interior tub done differently. I've seen it in bare carbon fiber, the yellow Kevlar, or just painted black. I think I'm going to go with the carbon fiber. Now these are the overlays for the edge of the intake that everybody paints black. These are not supposed to be black. I'm curious why that was molded separately from the engine. And with the body being in such rough shape, I am pleasantly surprised there are almost no mold lines or flash on any of these sprues. And I will leave these in the packaging to keep them protected, but they're all in great shape. They're thin, they're clear, they're just all around good clear parts from Tamiya. And 
to me a decals do not age very well so I am glad that this is a small decal sheet and I'm kind of surprised to see that these still have the sliders the plexiglass windows only the first 50 or so cars had the slider windows not a lot of chrome to this kit which I am glad for The wheels obviously going to be staggered to go with them tires. These tires were unheard of for their time. They were something crazy like a 335. We didn't see anything like that until the Viper came back out in the mid 90s. There was a lot of small fiddly bits packaged in there so I don't want to open them up to risk losing them. But the tread pattern is perfect. Not a lot to see here, just regular old instructions. I was hoping we'd get more of a breakdown as why we got two sets of mirrors. Nope, just says use either or. Moving on to the aftermarket bits I've collected, we're going to start off with the Kevlar. This will be to line the backs of the seats and various parts of the body. This is made by Model Factory Hero, I believe is how it's pronounced. And I have plenty of carbon fiber sheets left over from Zoom On Models, so I don't have any to unbox here. Next up we got the Super Detail Set from Hobby Design. Close up of that dirty nasty fingernail while I pop some bubble wrap like a child. First up we got a baggie full of resin. We got the rotor hats, calipers, seat belt latches, and I think we got new pins to go through the center wheel since they are center lock. And I had it flipped over there, we saw some seat belt material. some tiny tiny rivets in here and I have no idea what they go to I am not entirely sure why these have a blue background. I'm hoping that they're metal transfers and adhesive because these are mostly badges. I do not want to have to glue these on. There's a million tiny screw heads on these. I'm not sure what they go to. I think they line the bottom of the chassis. Here, all we have are the faces for the radiators and the overlay for the sliding vent windows. These are the insides of the rotors. They will get stacked and layered to simulate the cooling vanes inside. Now 
this fret's a bit more stout than the first one. That one's kind of floppy. And I'm not really sure what the rest of these are, but we'll find out. And I am so happy to see we got proper mesh for the rear of the bonnet. This fret contains the fan assemblies and the rest of the rotors. And a small bunch of little fiddly bits I'm not sure what are yet. This is the bubble wrap that kept it all safe. It's good high quality stuff. All the bubbles still have air in them. And it looks like those tiny little rivets actually hold the fans in place. Now I thought that those tiny rivets would go in the rotor hats to simulate the screws that hold it to the rotor, but I am wrong. They are molded in, and I am looking very forward to painting them. A lot of parts on those frets that are not accounted for in this instruction sheet. Well, let's get to building. Mm -hmm. 